everybody, welcome back to This is the Police 2, Chris here, and we went through kind of an interrogation, we wrote a letter and stuff, doesn't sound very interesting, but it all links back to the previous game, which um, I might end up doing after this, actually, um, but yeah, things are going along kind of well, um, I think we made a mistake with the interrogation, I think we're supposed to get some information out of that and make our main character, Lily, a little bit more confident. She's struggling against kind of a male-dominated world, which is not great. She needs confidence. We need to get her some confidence. But anyway, we're going to continue on. So, here we go. Ha! We could hardly shut the guy up. He wasn't so tough. I didn't even get to the phase three. <laughs> phase three is where we I'm... don't have a lot of time. They're moving their headquarters, but we should be able to nab most of them if we hurry. It's north of here, the old summer camp. But they never keep the goods at their headquarters. They always use a different place, usually an isolated house on the outskirts. Most of the time, these places have random tenants who don't even suspect that there's anything hidden under their floorboards. That way, the drugs can never be linked back to the neckties or the neckties to the drugs. I think I know Remember where they are. that little tavern called Forsetti? We went drinking there after graduation and broke that big mirror. Mr. Blaine's converted it into a house, and now he rents it out for almost nothing. Two weeks ago, an old man moved in, and under his floorboards, there's 27 kilograms of heroin. Wow. I'm starting to think that guy is leading us around by the nose. I bet there's four or five armed guards at the house. But you said it's a small place, right? Well, I bet there's two at least. I don't believe they just left the stuff under some old man's floorboards. Even they? if there is an old man living there, I bet he's in on it. Hey, maybe old man is just a nickname. What do you think? I Charlie, bet he's a right cut shut there, up. Hunkered down there, ready to ambush us. Maybe he already... Well, you and Corey, go check it out. Take two cars in case it's not just an old man living in the house. Whoever you find there, bring them in. And don't forget about the heroin. Rest of you will come with me to storm their headquarters. Sound good to you, Lily? Gail's trying to uh, do stuff right, but he's taking control and that's not helping. All events that require your attention are displayed in the Sharkwood map by a card in the call list. Okay. Uh, each call has a minimum professionalism requirement to ensure that your cops can go on a call the overall professionalism must meet the minimum required by that call okay so drug trafficking 5 to uh, 562 I'm guessing that's the thing so we'll take Fletcher and Bellow because that's 600 send Oh, that's so cute. Okay. So that's where Nash is staying, I bet. A very drunk Nash. anyone better to watch the goods or oh, they just didn't bother or are we missing something you're missing what do you a think, lot you think we're missing something huh is there some kind of special meaning to the fact that we've got drunk dirty grandpa here sitting in the shack watching the goods maybe we need to crack the code here huh well any ideas where they hid the powder how about you look around while I <laughs> while I interrogate the suspect huh well, you're a moron. They told you, under the floorboards. Ugh. 
You. What's your name, old man? <laughs> Boy. What did you say, old man? You need to answer nice and clear when a police officer speaks to you. My name is uh, Nash. Uh, Warren Nash. I'll I, uh... tell you something, Warren Nash. Fifteen years on the force. I've seen all sorts of dirty shits. This town isn't exactly upscale, in case you haven't noticed. I've caught thieves, caught rapists, murderers, and drug traffickers. All part of the job, you know? I'm doing my job. Nice and easy. I like know. a professional. Oh, totally not. But here you are. This... this filth. You're... You don't make it easy to be easy. Filth like you drives me up the wall. With scum like you, I can't... I... I just can't keep up the cold-blooded professional attitude. I just can't. You know why, Warren? Because... You're oh, a sorry, moron? Warren. I'll be just a second, all right? <laughs> Shit, Charlie! What the hell? Do you want Corey, to... just look for the fucking drugs while I'm busy with the fucking suspect, okay? So, Warren, filthy things like you, you drive me nuts. Because you think that we'll never catch up with you. You think the police can't do anything. You think we just rescue cats from trees and help old old ladies carry their bags up to the porch. You, you think, you believe, you really, really believe that we'll never get to you. So you don't even have to try. You taking good care of the goods here, Warren? You ready for us here, Warren? Just waiting in ambush, Warren? You did fucking nothing, Warren! Fucking nothing! Because you thought we'd never come. But here I am, Warren. Here I am! What are you gonna do now, Warren? What's the big plan, Warren? Hey, I think I found something. You hear that, Warren? He found something. Next time, hide it better. I so want to kick Charlie's butt. I'm sorry about oh, the swearing, people. This looks like 27 keys of heroin to you? I... I would say there's somewhere between 26 and 28 keys. Well... Well, th well that sounds like 27, right? Yep. Yep, looks like 27. So what are we thinking here? You load it up in the car, and I'll pack up the old man. And any of this other junk we might need. Uh, I'd like, uh... I need, I, I really need to talk to the sheriff as soon as possible. I'm Sheriff Reed. You can talk all you like, but if I were you, I'd wait for my lawyer, Mr. Nash. I don't, uh, you, you said you're the sheriff? That's what I said. I, uh, no, no, I'm just, I, are you Sharpwood, Sheriff? I'm the sheriff. You, uh, you could... Do you have the authority to- Look, I'm wearing a shiny star on my chest. I'm sitting here in the middle of the night, and even though I'm exhausted, I'm poring over murder files that no one else wants to bother with. So yeah, I'm the sheriff. I may not be used to all this, and I'm not sure I ever will be, but I don't have another sheriff for you, Mr. Nash. You might as well accept it. Listen, Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Reed, right? Great, Sheriff Reed. Uh, I need to talk to the sheriff, and, and you're the sheriff, so... It's even better. I, I mean, older sheriffs sometimes... Well, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I, uh, I just want to say that there's been a mistake. And I want to help you out here because I... Yeah, because... Uh, there was a huge batch of cocaine hiding in your house. You want me to believe you didn't know anything about it? I rent that house. Only lived there a couple of weeks. And you... You know all that, right? It's easy to check, huh? Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, but, but that's not important. It's, it's not that I, uh, I... I'm trying... 
Listen, Sheriff Reed, you... You have to listen to me very carefully. I'm a policeman, just like you, you know? Oh. So you must be undercover. Is that it, Mr. Nash? No, 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 that's... It's much more complicated than that. My name isn't Warren Nash. I... Yeah, I already knew that. Your fake documents are so bad, they practically fell apart in my hands. If you... If you let me explain, I... <laughs> Would you like to see my real document, Sheriff? Look, that humidor, you see it? What? That little box, the, the little wooden box on the table, see? Looks like a jewelry box. It's locked. We'll crack it open in the morning. Well, wouldn't you rather open it now? Please, Sheriff Reed, let's open it now, and, and I'll try to explain everything. Okay. I'm in a very difficult situation, and I'm asking you to listen to me. Just open the box, and you'll find my passport in there. My real passport. My name's Jack Boyd. The documents that say I'm Warren Nash, I bought them for 90 bucks at the rail station. Please, just open the box and I'll explain everything, please. Ooh. You say you were a cop, huh? Yes, 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 I I was a cop. I, I was the chief of police, just like you. Look, it's a very long and complicated story, but I... I assure you, this is all just a huge misunderstanding. A and the fact that I've gone into hiding here, the fact that I'm here at all, it's, a, it's an injustice that I want to correct. And I'm asking you to help me. Okay. Interesting. Picture, passport. Sheriff, Sheriff Reed, let's talk. I'm begging you. Um, that probably didn't go the way he wanted it to. poster sheriff reed let me Do you me... even know what you've been accused of mr mr boyd i let, let's just say i i don't know if you know what happened in freeburg last winter but it had nothing to do with the law or justice i was used you and i do understand that i have to report you to the feds right mr boyd sheriff reed if you do this you you just continue this i think i believe that Cops should help each other, so I just want to say, you seem like the kind of person We've who... known each other for five minutes, Mr. Boyd. I doubt very much that I've made any impression on you at all. Whatever you've got yourself mixed up in, I hope that... I hope that you find justice, if that's really what you want. But for now... But while I... For now, all I know is this. You're a criminal, and they're looking for you. Your... your folder... Your folder, that's a case file. Can, can I see it? Excuse me? I worked as a detective for years. Even when I was chief, I did half of my detective's work. Yeah. If, you, if you're having trouble with the case, I'm sure I can help. Cops should help each other. My exact words, right? You think... You, you think that I... Listen, Sheriff Reed, what do you have to lose? You're the head of this police department. You've got to think rationally. I'm not trying to teach you how to do your work. I'm just, well, just for a minute, forget about all that, the other. This whole awkward situation, okay? Right? You have an unsolved murder, and there's someone standing right in front of you who's offering to help. Maybe I'm an imposter, and I can't actually do anything. Maybe I'll even turn out to be a lunatic, scatter the file around the cell, and dance around like a wild monkey. But maybe, <laughs> just maybe... I really am an experienced cop who can help you find your killer. Don't you want that? Don't you want to give me a chance since you've got nothing to lose? Don't you want a real criminal in prison, not some sorry victim of circumstance like me? That's police work. 
catching the real criminals, right? There's an awful lot of cutscenes here. Sorry about this, guys. I want to get more gameplay done, but I think we have to get through this first. I guess I'm going crazy. No, you just have to look up. To solve the crime, you need to reconstruct a picture of what happened by placing the frames for the crime's key events in the right order. Okay, so that's there, I and mean, that's there. So we've got five pictures that we have to put them in. To figure out what happened, you should carefully examine the evidence and witness testimony. If you have all the necessary frames, but two people are suspected of a murder, you need to analyze what information you have available and figure out which of them is the true culprit. <clears throat> Victim's wife. I was at the neighbors to borrow some salt. I heard that their TV, on their TV, there's some crazy maniacs starting killing in Ripton. The journalist nicknamed him the wrestler because he wears a wrestling mask. I usually don't pay attention to the news, but this time I remember because I was leaving. I noticed a Latina man in the street with a big sports bag. He was just taking off a mask. I got home and there's blood everywhere, and Bob is nowhere to be found. You think that maniac came all the way out of here? here from Ripton. Okay. So that was Ruth Finnegan, victim's wife. Okay. Katrina, Katrina, neighbor. That evening, Ruth came over to borrow some salt. It's funny, she works at this grocery store, but it's, she's always missing something. She sat at my place for a while, then said she was going back to make dinner for Bob. I don't know how she put up with him, a typical man. He's always walking around in a stupid t-shirt, spent the whole day staring at the TV and yelling for Ruth to bring him another Frosty. I went to visit often enough, it's always the same thing. Recently Ruth decided to try being a vegetarian. She's read in a magazine that will make you live an extra 10 years, plus you get to lose a few pounds. So she started cooking without meat, beginning with vegetable soup. Uh, vegetable soup thought she surprised Bob, but when he came home from work, he was yelling, what is this without meat? I lived next door, I could hear everything. They almost got into a fight. Victim turned bathroom. The bathroom is covered in blood. It looks like this is where the victim's corpse was butchered. Nice! Victim's body parts were neatly laid out on the counter as if they were on display set for all to see. There's a crumpled garbage bag under the counter with traces of blood inside. Victim's throat was cut in one single confident motion. Death came almost instantly. No signs of struggle on the body. The corpse was dismembered after death. That's the last clue. Okay. Manning Wrestling Mask watches Bob Finnegan through a window. Manning Wrestling Mask approaches Bob Finnegan with hacksaw in hand. Manning Wrestling Mask cuts Bob Finnegan's throat with hacksaw. So we've got six pictures. The man in wrestling mask. Also, bathtub, man in wrestling mask, plus not. Okay. Watches TV. I don't think that's the right one. Victim's wife. Ruth Finnegan, Ruth Finnegan, crawl over vegetable soup. Ruth Finnegan approaches Bob Finnegan with a knife in her hand. Cuts Finnegan's throat with a knife. Carves up Bob Finnegan's corpse top with a cleaver. It's North Star going to carrying garbage bag. Ooh. Alright, so we know that the it was body was cut up with um In the tub, we know the victim's throat was cut.
I don't know why the wrestler would go to North Star. And other than seeing a Latino man with a sports bag, and that's from Ruth on the street, I think it was the victim's wife. Honestly. why she killed her husband to escape unhappy marriage the last straw was his criticism of soup she decided to kill her husband to make it look as though the maniac knows the wrestler did it I gotta say other than other than her saying that she saw a little man in the street with a big sports bag I, I just don't I don't buy it No signs of struggle. Of course, was this member after death? And why take it to the store? That's where she works. And a neighbour saying they constantly arguing. Yeah. Um, I've got to say it's probably the wife. Yes. Look. Okay. That's what I'm thinking anyway. That's what my brain's saying. You may not agree. Comment section, let me know. Lily, are you there? Lily? Lily here. Come in. Copy. I'm on my way. Ooh. Maybe we're gonna get some action now. Wouldn't that be cool? Flashbangs. Mm, flashbangs. So? I'm not seeing anything. Lily, it's time. Yes, just let me look at the plan. Yeah. Lily, we've got everything covered. Gail, I need to take a look at the plan. Yeah. Gail, Do what told. The plan? Lily, do you want to look at the plan or do you want to change the plan? I need to see the plan before I decide whether I need to change it. Gail? Gail? Back off. She's right. I was set up in an, a vacuum. She's the boss. It's her name on it. All right, things to do. Interrogate the necktie. Get all the information available. Outfit and assign your strike team. Usually it takes several days to plan an assault, but this time Gail had to sketch out a plan in a hurry. Maybe you want to change something. Gather intel. Abandon Linden Grant's complex. To every position there has to be a cop with the appropriate skills or equipment necessary for this salt. We don't know, that's the problem. Well chain gunman. Gail wants to put a quick cup around the side of the car wash so we can cut off any escaping neckties. That's the car wash. Carefully consider and turn and select cops. Gail is confident that a clever cop could outwit the, the side door of the workshop and sneak inside. Gail is assigned an agile cop to run stun grenade and storm the workshop. Gail believes that a stealthy cop can sneak into the workshop unnoticed and take the neckties by surprise. Hmm. 
So you have to choose what you want to do. Oh, this is this is a di bit different. can lead the assault. He wants to capture as many target ties as alive as possible. Mm. Do you want to? Or do you want? I think we'll probably go with that guy. Sign everybody. All right, we've got too many. All oh, right, okay, I just figured it out. Oh, we have to go. But that's just doing that, okay. He's gonna take him to Canaan right away. Yes, let's get him over here. Someone needs to go get Canaan. Does anyone know Canaan lives? Jesse, grab that blue bag over there. Bring it over here. I'll call him. Bring me that bag. I'll call Canaan. The bag, Jesse. Jesus, Jesse, we don't have time for that. Bring me that bag. No, 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 come on. Lily, put pressure here. Press there and you don't let him. Make it? You think he'll make it? Someone got shot. We need to put something under his head. He's dead, Lily. Oh, Lily. dear. He's dead. Gail's dead. Oh dear. Now Lily's gonna have to deal with everybody with no backup from Gale, even though he wasn't very good at the backup. What was his name? I mean, I mean the deceased officer. What's his name? Gail Greenberg. Were you close? No, but... No. Oh, we, dear. we went to school together. Sheriff Reed, I... Sheriff Reed, ha! Huh. Sheriff Reed. If my dad could hear you say that, he'd died of laughter. He'd laugh like a madman, choke on his favorite meatballs even. Sheriff Reed. Call me Lily. My aunt lived in Freeburg. She, she sold flowers. Had her own store, a little shop. My mother and I used to visit during the summer. You have warm summers there. Warmer than here. <laughs> Anywhere's warmer than here. <laughs> so, what happened in Freeburg, Mr. Boyd? It's, that's a very, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, F forgive me, Lily. I, I begged you for a chance to tell you everything, and now I don't know where to start. 
You were slandered? You could say that. So you aren't guilty of anything? I, uh, I'm plenty guilty, but, but not what I've been accused of. I was just a fool. A blind fool. Yeah. You're right, Mr. Boyd. Uh, I'm sorry? The sheriff's job is to think rationally. I figured I might be a shit cop, but at least I can think rationally. Now I'm... Now I'm... Not so sure. Lily, listen to me. You aren't guilty of anything. I've been a police chief going on 13 years, and I can't say that I never... I, uh... Let's just say it's a difficult job. It gets complicated. And to put you in this position, it was, uh... I just want to say don't that... Don't be shy, Mr. Boyd. I don't make much of a sheriff. Is that what you wanted to say? Because I completely agree with you. Lily, listen to me. I'm a policeman. Whatever position I'm in now, whatever this is, whatever my official status, I'm still a policeman. I'm a policeman and I know how to do this job. And I will help you. Cops should help each other. Isn't that what we were talking about earlier? Don't you agree with me? What was it you said, Mr. Boyd? Maybe you're an imposter, maybe you're crazy, but... But maybe... Maybe you... I... Honestly, I don't even know if I... Lily, why are you pointing that gun at me? Can I get out of this cage? Lily? Yes, Mr. Boyd. Yes, you can get out of the cage. You, uh, you want me to... Well, I, I guess I'm asking. You want me to get to work? What is it you want me to do exactly? You can get some sleep in the break room. It's over there to the left, the dark green door. I'll still be here in the morning, and in the morning we... In the morning we... Well, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Tomorrow you can gather up your things, Mr. Boyd. Yes, I just, uh... uh this letter, I... I'd like to send it as soon as possible. This, uh... It's for my children. It's important. I can mail it for you. I, I don't mind. I I've got a letter to mail myself. Lily, uh, I wanted what? to... You want to know if I'm going to call the feds? No, I won't call the feds. Do I realize that means I'm breaking the law? Yeah, I know. Do I understand that you could make a run for it at any time? Yeah, I know that too. Past caring. I'll see you in the morning. Checkpoint. Give me a checkpoint. Yay! Okay, people, that's where we're going to call it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then please do hit that like button. Don't forget to comment and share. If you're new to the channel, like we saw, please do consider subscribing. The story's slowly taking shape, um, and we're, we're getting introduced to different game aspects like playing strikes um, and things like that so fingers crossed it's going to pick up and we're going to get more out of it but until next time you lot take care of yourselves I'll see you there bye bye